Greetings everyone, this is Andrew from MobileBurn.com and I'm taking a look at the Samsung Galaxy Note 2. Uh, this is the T-Mobile variant, but it's available on all major carriers in the US, AT&T, T-Mobile, uh, Sprint, and US Cellular as well. Now, the first thing I can say about this phone, in case you haven't noticed, is that it's large. It's very large, in fact. Uh, just for the sake of comparison, here's a Samsung Galaxy Nexus, which is a, a large phone in its own right. And as you can see, uh, the Galaxy Note 2 towers over that. And just to drive the point home a little more, here's a Motorola Droid Razor M. Uh, and the entire Droid Razor M can fit in the screen area alone of the Galaxy Note 2 and still leaves space. So it is a large phone. And the reason for that is because this is meant to be a phone and a tablet of sorts. It has a 5.5 inch HD Super AMOLED display, 1280 by 720 resolution, and it's pretty good. Uh, it has Super AMOLED and some people aren't fans of that display tactic, but the colors in this display are actually fairly well uh, when you, you can't really see it when you zoom in on text your eye will see the text clearly the colors will look well the images will appear nicely on the screen and video will flow in a very consistent and nice manner you won't have a problem with that now back to the physical build of the device yes it is large but it's not heavy at all it only weighs 180 grams so I can hold it in one hand but because of the the, the size of the phone, using it with one hand is not always going to be the easiest thing. For instance, let's say I wanted to tap on this widget, I'd have to reach over and a lot of times your hands will press the physical buttons that are down there. Uh, your palm will press into it. So when I go like that, right there it worked okay. But there is other times when you're touching areas of the screen, you're reaching across and I'm someone with very large hands. So even for me, sometimes I have to arc to make sure I touched the button just right, and that can sometimes be a problem. Uh, the phone comes in marble white or titanium gray, which is like a bluish gray type of color. Uh, it has a glossy plastic finish on the back and the front. Uh, on the sides, you've got like this uh, hard plastic metal looking rim, volume up and down buttons on the left, a uh, power button on the right a physical home button right here on the bottom and you have menu and back buttons that can be set to only appear when you tap them or appear all the time. Internally, the Galaxy Note 2 has pretty much everything that you can ask for. It has two gigabytes of RAM, so it can keep up with most of what you're doing. And uh, most impressively of all, it has a 1.6 gigahertz quad core processor. Now that pretty much held up in all of the tasks that I threw at it. It's very smooth, very responsive, uh, it snaps. The only problems that I experienced, uh, not with games or anything like that, let me show you right now, but when I press the home button, sometimes there's a little bit of a lag for it to recognize the command and go to home. Also, sometimes when you're in app, you're holding in portrait mode, and when you switch to landscape, there can be a split second delay that you'll notice over time. But otherwise, you will find that it's very fluid, very responsive, it's quick, it snaps from one app to the next. You can hold down and switch to apps, so I can do task switching like that. I can tap the calculator and it comes up fairly quickly. I can go home and again, you notice that little lag when you press home, but other than that, when you tap on an app, it loads very quickly. Obviously, there's Wi-Fi, there's Bluetooth 4.0, uh, and when you want to go mobile, on, with this variant, I have T-Mobile, so it has HSPA+, Plus, uh, the faster speeds on T-Mobile's network, but it also has LTE compatibility and 3G, of course. Uh, other interesting things, when you go to more settings, you'll notice that it has Wi-Fi calling set up on T-Mobile. It has NFC, so I can uh, do mobile payments, I can do wireless uh, data transfer between phones. It has S-Beam, which is... Uh, Samsung's take on Android Beam, which allowed you to tap your phone to another Samsung phone, a Galaxy Note 2 or a Galaxy S3, and you can transfer large files very quickly. Uh, so if I tap two phones to the back of each other, it'll instantly send a large photos or large videos to the other phone. You can turn that on or off in your settings. 
It also has all share cast. Basically what this does, it, it shares your device with another screen. So if you have a Samsung TV in the background, uh, you can mirror what's on your phone to the TV. So you can do that for presentations or to show photos to, to family and friends. It also has keys. So if you're on the same network as your computer, you can wisely transfer files from your computer to the phone. And uh, depending on what type of computer you have, that might be a good option because with Macs, you might sometimes experience some uh, some problems with connecting the mounting the phone to the computer. There are some uh, tricks that you can use. There are some apps from Google to help with that, but it's not always a smooth transition. As strange as the large size of the Galaxy Note 2 may be for some people, one of the benefits is that it comes with this little guy right here, which is the Samsung S Pen. Now, this is basically more than just a stylus. It's like a, a digital pen that can do stuff for drawing. It can uh, institute the way you change stuff with the interface. You can uh, input. It does a lot of things that come in handy. The most notable, most notable being the Samsung Galaxy S Note app. With this app, you can create notes and you can also draw. So I'm going to open this note right here. Oh, there was a little bit of lag right there, huh? I didn't notice that before. Uh, with this note, this is a drawing that I did earlier. And basically, the S Note S Pen allows you to, when you hold down, you can draw. If you don't like what you did, you press the back button. You can erase stuff completely by going into eraser mode. And I'll erase the mobile burn part. And then I'll go back to the pen. And if I want to change, I can choose from a variety of pens. You have pencils, brushes. You can also change the color. All right, so I'll select this, go back, and then I'll just draw. And now I have a new shirt. So let's say you're the artistic type. You want to have a pressure sensitive drawing. You hold down a little more and you can shade stuff like that. I'm not very good drawer, despite what you may see here. I'm not very good at that. But this is an option of what you can do. And there are a variety of notes that you can create with the S Pen. Uh, I'm gonna create a new one right now. And it gives you templates. You can have one with ideas. So if you wanna take a picture of something and then uh, jot down annotations, uh, that's actually something that I did previously where I took a picture of a room and then I plotted where I want to place things. So I can have a TV here, a desk there. And then I just drew on the top of the image. If I wanted to, I can also add other notes below with text. Or I can record an audio note. Uh, let me show you that by now creating a new note. Now that I have my words down, if I wanted, I could tap right here. And I can record a voice memo. So I can say, greetings everyone. This is the words that I said, or these are the words that I should say, actually. I stop it. Words that I should say, actually. So this can come in handy when you're uh, jotting down ideas, outlining, uh, mapping. You're doing long-term projects, or you just see something that inspires you, and you want to get creative or help yourself remember the next plan of attack, it can come in handy that way. You can also add photos like I did in the other note, and you can do that with video as well. You can copy from your clipboard, which is a pretty cool feature. So I'll take a screenshot right now. Okay, I took that screenshot. Then I'm going to share. I'm gonna send that into S Note. Now I can choose to create a new note or I can put it in an existing note. So I'll do that with this one. So now this note, this image is in there. I can resize it or reposition it. All right, now that I have this, I can annotate it and say, use that one. So let's say you have something that you wanna show someone else. This is a, a cool way of going about doing that. Uh, or if it's something that you wanna do for yourself, you can do that as well. If you want to have them focus their attention, you can erase the notes that you've made. Uh, it's fairly easy to manage, fairly easy to do, and it's very useful. Now, if I want to add, now another interesting way to type is to 
actually type with the keyboard. You can do that with standard typing, tapping on screen. It might not be the easiest for you, but it actually gives you a lot of space to type on this, and I felt very comfortable writing on there. But because this has swipe and you have the S Pen, you can actually input text another way. So I'm just going to type a sentence right now, or I should say swipe a sentence. I'll start at A, and I just flow over the keyboard and you see it moves with me very quickly. It, whatever I write, it follows along. Andrew is the greatest Preston. I actually meant to type person. I guess I was moving a little too quickly, but that's another way that you can use the, the S Pen to add added functionality to the phone. The S Pen proves its value outside of the S Note application as well. For instance, when I'm in the browser, typically, if uh, let's say I want to go to the Mobile Burn site and I want to see a specific menu item, this actually works as a mouse over. So it detects when the uh, S Pen is hovering over a particular item. So it recognizes that and then brings down to the next item. Now, if I try to use my finger like that, let's see. You see, it doesn't notice that. It doesn't notice that I'm hovering over finger, over videos. But with the S Pen, it detects that and then gives me the drop-down menu automatically. Another place where this comes in handy is in the gallery application. So let's go back and open that now. Gallery. In the gallery, you have several ways of viewing items. You can do it like that. You can go through a carousel as well. Is the carousel, but when I click on a particular item, it, it opens the image. Uh, <laughs> let's say I just wanted to get a, a bigger preview of that. If I hold down with the S Pen, it zooms in. When I let go of the S Pen, it zooms out. Does the same thing when I go to gallery, it opens up and shows me images from that folder. Oh, that's on Picasso, so it won't work. But if I hold down on camera, you see more and more and you get a preview of it now let's once I'm in here if I want to change something I hold down hold down and then I drag that over I can move that into a new folder and it moves over you can get little types of tricks like that as well uh, when you go into the video application so I'll try opening up a video I will open up an app Okay, here is the seek bar so I can change where it's positioned, right? But if I hold down with the S Pen, it gives me a little thumbnail to preview where I'm going to go. And I say, yes, that's the part I meant to do, so I can tap that. If I want to go back, it does the same thing. So it gives you a nice little preview while you're using it. This is called AirView. Basically, there are certain apps built within the phone that recognize when it's when the S Pen is hovering over it, it detects it and provides added functionality. It's one of the, the key use cases to explain why this phone might come in handy. Uh, and it also shows some of the inventiveness that Samsung came up with the S Pen.